Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to using a stencil with your PCB design and surface mount components. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how a stencil can be used to speed up the process for building up PCB designs that have surface mount components. If you like what you see here and you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Forstronics. And with that said, let's get started. Okay, what is a stencil? What is it for? Where do you get them? So on and so forth. Before I get into that, let me mention I have a video on solder paste, or I have a video called solder paste surface mount components in a toaster oven and you. If you're totally new to using solder paste and placing surface mount components on a PCB and using an oven to do reflow, if all that is new to you, I'd recommend checking out the video mentioned at the bottom left first before looking at this video. For this video, we're gonna talk about a stencil. And in my previous video, I, I talked about using solder paste, a tube like shown in the top right by hand to apply solder paste to your pads on your PCB design. Well, what a stencil is, it's a flat piece of material, can be metal, and it basically has the pads for your surface mount components cut out to match your PCB design. So you can lay that stencil on top of your PCB, use a card like a credit card and some solder paste to rub the solder paste over the stencil. And with the hole, holes cut in the stencil, you get nice uniform layer of solder paste on all your surface mount pads. So that's essentially what a stencil is. I'm gonna show an example of using it. But the main benefits are it speeds up the process of building up boards. So, you know, if you are doing a multiple prototypes of the same design, or maybe you're doing small run manufacturing, which is my two applications, either prototyping or small run manufacturing, getting a stencil made makes a lot of sense because it really speeds up the process. Also, it can help you do better on your PCB designs when you're dealing with smaller pads. So an example I have of that from a real experience was I, I had this real small BLE module made by Anoran. In fact, I did a video on it. It's the A2737A. And that's a board that has small pads and they're on the bottom. So when you put them on your PCB, you can't even really see them. So, you know, I laid down my solder paste by hand, put on the BLE module, did the reflow, and it wasn't working. And I noticed I was getting some small, or not small, strange voltage values. So I, I tried to figure out what the problem was. I came to the conclusion that it had to be, you know, on my solder job, but I couldn't verify it because I couldn't probe the pad. So I had to get a heat gun to uh, melt the solder and I popped off the component. I put it under a microscope. And what I found out was not all the solder pads had been connected, meaning the solder didn't flow to some of the BLE pads on the board. The reason was, was because when I laid it down by hand, my solder paste globs were different sizes or different heights. So the ones that were small, the pads never made contact with the solder paste, hence they never got connected. A stencil would have solved that problem because with a stencil you get a nice uniform layer and spread. Anyway, with that said, let's move on to the video demonstration. Okay, here I'm showing a board. This is actually my wireless flex node product that I sell on my site, forstronics.com. And I'm basically gonna use this as an example. And basically here I have a jig and I got these boards when I ordered my stencil. It was an option to get the boards with it. To make this jig, I have these glued down on a white board. So I'll put my PCB into this jig and you'll see that and then I'll put the stencil on top of it. So there is me showing the, the jig and putting it in there. And I had the jig pretty tight, so I actually have to bend it a little to get the PCB in there. But once it's in there, I get the, uh, so I already applied the solder paste to the stencil. It doesn't take much. So I'm gonna match it up. You can see the, the hole, so I'm gonna line it up with my PCB pads. Not too hard of a task. You know, you wanna be sure you, you hold it down pretty well. Now, is there a way to do this non-manually with the clamps or something like that? I'm, I'm sure there is. Uh, and if you're doing a lot, you may wanna do more of a more advanced jig. But right now, I'm just gonna hold the stencil down by hand. I have this card that I got from the supplier. You can use any type of card, really, though. And I'm just gonna smooth the solder paste over it. And basically, you know, you gotta do a couple swipes. You gotta bend the card down because you're gonna get solder paste on the edge of the card. 
but it's not too hard to do. And I'm kind of looking closely to make sure I get some of the pads. You wanna make sure the stencil stays down close to the board so you're not getting solder paste bleeding out. So there I am, I'm done. Notice how quick that was, pretty darn quick. I'm gonna put the stencil to the side, the card to the side, and I'm just gonna throw a component on there. I have a capacitor on, this, on the side there. So I'm just gonna plop it on. I have a little trouble here, I'm nervous. You know, tough to perform in front of a live camera. But I get the component on and there we go. Okay, here's actually a better view of the final product. So you can see the, the solder paste on the pads. Here's, here's the oscillator pads and you can see they're pretty small. So that's one of the, the areas the pad, the stencil really helps out at. And here's the component that I just put on. You also get a closer look at, at the jig that I'm, I'm putting the board into. Now, if you're doing this in mass quantities, you know, I had a tube of solder and I sprayed some on the, on the board from the tube. You can buy a much larger amount of solder paste and maybe put it into a you know, Tupperware dish, dip your card in there and spread it on. So that, you know, that's if you're doing a lot of them. So what I wanna show you next is some places where you can get stencils. So some people even make stencils themselves. That seems a little time consuming. They're, they're not really that expensive. If you're in the US, here's a good place to go, Osh Stencils. At first, I used to think that this was part of Osh Park, but someone told me no. It's, you know, they're using the open source hardware, Osh, but they're not part of Osh Park. Anyway, from this site, you can order the stencil, and the stencil that you saw in the video, I ordered from this, this company, Osh Stencil. You can also order the jig, which is what you saw in the, the video, and they also send you a card to spread out the solder paste, in which you saw in the video. But most PCB suppliers do stencils nowadays. So here's another, here's another PCB company that I often use uh, that are, that's overseas, PCB Way, and you can see that you can get a stencil made from them too. So plenty of places to go to get stencils made. They're not really that expensive these days. Okay, that is it for using a stencil with your PCB design and surface mount components. If you have any comments or any insights you, you, you want to add from personal experience, please use the comment section under the video. And as I mentioned before, if you haven't subscribed yet to the Forstronics YouTube channel, please do. Thank you for watching.